investors, and welcome to Stocks to Watch, where we spotlight innovative companies really shaping the future of healthcare, technology, and beyond. Today, we have a very important story to share with you. We're joined by GT Biopharma, Inc., traded on the NASDAQ under the symbol GTBP. With us are Michael Breen, Executive Chairman and CEO, and Dr. Jeffrey Miller, Consulting Senior Medical Director. So let's get into the weeds here. GT Biopharma is really pioneering immunotherapies that harness the power of natural killer cells to fight cancer. And today we'll dive deeper into their approach, pipeline, and progress. Such important work here. Gentlemen, welcome to Stocks to Watch. Many thanks, Ashley. Very kind of you to have us on the show. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Yes, absolutely. So, Michael, I'd like to start with you. Um, <clears throat> despite incremental developments in the fight against cancer, it's still an excruciating battle. So what options would you say cancer patients today have when it comes to treatments? In general, the um, treatments given to cancer patients um, today are very similar to what they were um, 80 years ago. So the treatments have been around for the last 80 years. And whilst there have been some improvements in certain areas, generally they have not really moved on significantly. So if you're if you're unfortunate enough to um, have cancer, you will generally be offered um, chemotherapy, which of course is effectively poisoning your blood and will make you generally very sick. Yeah. Um, radiotherapy, which is effectively burning your flesh, or um, surgery, which is attempting to cut out the tumour. Um, and if you're very unlucky, you may even be offered two or all three of those solutions. Mm. Now, at GT Biopharma, our approach is that there's got to be there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a less barbaric, more humane solution. Um, and you know, there's been many, many advancements over the last eighty years in many different fields. Um, if you just look at things like mobile telephony and, and um, going to the moon and, and things like that. So our approach is that we believe that through our trike technology, we have found a way um, <clears throat> and developed a, a solution that is a much more humane uh, solution for cancer sufferers. Mm -hmm. So the approach that we take is, in layman's terms, we effectively take the body's own natural immune system, we treat it with our drug, and that, in effect, turbocharges the body's natural immune system, mm -hmm. which activates and gives it specificity that it can actually attack and kill the cancer cells. And, um, you know, obviously, by doing so, we're, we're not cutting or burning or poisoning the patient in, in doing so. So that's that's our approach. And I appreciate that explanation and the fact that, uh, Michael, you said, you know, make it less barbaric, more humane. I mean, it, all of us probably, unfortunately, know somebody who has gone through this, um, at least I have. And so, you know, this is this is really powerful work that you're doing to not have to witness this for the patients, not have to experience that. Um, Dr. Miller, uh, if you could explain a little bit about what really makes the natural killer cells that I talked about earlier um, safer than T cells. Yeah. So, you know, we've been interested, um, just to bring this at a very high level, you know, in the body, there are certain white blood cells called lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. And the two major types of lymphocytes are T cells and natural killer cells. You know, we all have them. They're pretty much nonspecific mm -hmm. in the body, but they're really supposed to act as scavengers of either malignant cells or infectious diseases, because that's where the immune system works. So what we know, and I think much of your audience knows a lot about T cells, there have been many T cell products and CAR T cells that have been FDA approved and T cell engagers. And one thing that really distinguishes them from natural killer cells is that NK cells have a gentler way of being activated. You know, they 
T cells, when they become very, very activated, they make cytokines and cause what's called the cytokine release syndrome that has a lot of toxicities. Mm. So being that both NK cells and kill cells can t- kill targets and cancer targets, which is what we're aiming on, we really think we have a platform that enables the immune system to get activated efficiently But the main point is with greater safety, not requiring specialized centers for the delivery and really trying to get something that would be reachable to the cancer community, which is where the patients are. And I think, you know, really the the prime word here is natural. So it's sort of working in a natural way uh, versus, as what Michael said, poisoning the body. Um, And Michael, I'll I'll move to you, you know, GT Biopharma, the work you're doing. um, Let's talk about sort of the scalability or where you are right now on your current pipeline of drugs and clinical trials, what the progress has been. Um, So we were in a clinical trial in 2021 for what we now refer to as our first generation trick or molecule. um, And that was for blood cancer. Um, But we've really significantly moved the, the, technology on from that trial in 2021 and we're now we've now developed what we refer to as our second generation molecular trike and we're currently in a phase one clinical trial again for blood cancer uh, for acute myeloid leukemia Um, we've already treated five patients we're super excited to see what those results will be later in the year when we release some more data Um, in addition to that um, we also are uh, envisaging will file a investigational new drug application with the FDA later this year for uh, our trike, which is called 5550, and that is for solid tumours. That's going to be a basket trial. So it's going to cover all of the big solid tumours. It's going to be uh, head and neck cancer, lung cancer, uh, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, mm. and indeed uh, pancreatic cancer. And then the other Third IND, which we will file um, late 2026, early 2027, which will be uh, GTB 7550. That will be for autoimmune disease. Um, And and when I say second generation molecule, I I should stress that we're now using nanobody and camelid technology. Mm. And the, the second generation molecule is somewhere between 10 and 40 times more potent than the first generation molecule. So we're very excited with regard to what we're seeing already and and what we believe we will see in due course when we release really the data for the new for the patients. And just to dovetail off of that, you know, I'll I'll throw this out there for both of you. Um what would you say these clin- clinical trials really show about the efficacy of your drugs compared to other existing therapies? So let's just go through, you know, we're pretty early on in our testing by design and as required by the FDA who monitors the development of all new drugs. We're really in the safety phase. So remember, there is going to be the the B7H3, the solid tumor trials can be starting in 2026 after we do the filings this year. But for the AML trial, the acute myeloid leukemia trial that's ongoing, we're going through a dose escalation. We have not had any safety issues to date. So we can't talk a lot about effectiveness till we get to the right dose. And that's kind of what we're in the middle of right now. Just to be really clear to everybody, you know, the FDA is very prescriptive in saying how rapidly you can go up. And you could basically enroll a patient a month. So it takes about two months to get to a dose cohort. And we're dosing in cohort three, which is why we hope to have some data that's more substantial by the end of the year. But until you get to the effective dose, you know, we almost expect by design with everything we've learned about this drug, that the lower doses are not going to be very effective, but then we have to be very cautious and go up on safety. Remember, there are a lot of T-cell engagers that are out there, and those T-cell engagers have both this cytokine release syndrome, which can make people sick, and neurologic toxicity. So the FDA is very sensitive for these new protein engager reagents to make sure that we go up safely, and we don't 
too quickly bypass what the effective dose is going to be. So we don't have a lot to say about efficacy, at least today, but we have we hope to have more information by the end of the year as we go up in the dose escalation. Well, I think, you know, the transparency here is so paramount. So I certainly appreciate that, you know, and the honesty um, around what it is you're doing and the fact that you want to follow every step to a T. And it is it is critically important that the work that you're doing is effective and you want to make sure that that's the case. So so I appreciate that. And I'm sure our audience does um, as well. The the one thing I would ask, you know, there might be opportunities and concerns um, when it comes to using nanobots bodies in the human body. So what happens to those nanobodies after treatment? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. So remember the way that these trikes, the second generation trike that Michael initially introduced is a linear protein. It's trike tri-specific because there's three functional domains. You know, the first domain is really to latch on to NK cells. Remember, you mentioned yourself that these natural killers are innate. They're present in everybody's body. They don't need to be primed with a vaccine like T cells do. So we know that these cells are in the body. What we need to do is engage them. So one nanobody grabs on to the NK cells. And then this turbocharging, this IL-15 molecule brings to the immune synapse a supercharging bullet to say, hey, let's get activated now. And the third domain is an engager to the tumor target. So what we're basically doing is what the, you know, the CAR-T, the genetic modification of T cells, where there is eight to 10 commercially approved products now, This is really using a linear protein to try to make those synapses in the body by simply infusing them or giving them in a shot subcutaneously. Like any protein or antibody, eventually these will be degraded by the body. These are small enough that most of them are probably excreted through the kidneys when you urinate. Mm -hmm. We don't think that there's any issues with a breakdown of the nanobody components doing any harm in the body, because those would even be smaller components that the body could easily eliminate it. So, you know, there's no radioactivity. There is no toxins attached to these nanobodies. This is simply really to create that immune engagement with the natural immune system that you talked about, Mm -hmm. and then targeting it, giving it a boost with a protein cytokine, and having it very selectively becoming specific to the tumor target of origin. So each trach is different depending on what that tumor targeting domain is. And it happens that the B7H3 trike is broadly expressed in a number of solid tumors, which is why we have this basket trial of many tumor diagnoses to get the best shot on goal to understand where this is going to be effective as a drug. Well, it is it is absolutely fascinating work, incredibly innovative, I might add. Um, I will ask you finally, you know, for investors that are watching, they're maybe just learning um, about GT Biopharma that find your story fascinating, knowing that you are listed on the NASDAQ. Um, what catalysts, number one, should investors look out for? And then also, what really makes GT Biopharma a compelling investment opportunity today? That's a great question, actually. Uh, so in terms of catalysts, uh, as I explained earlier, the, the first one up will be the data that which we, we will release later in the year in relation to GTB 3650, which is the phase one trial for blood cancer. Um, so we're very excited about seeing that in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, what it shows um, and where we believe that it, it, it's going to be very interesting in terms of the data that's be, being produced. The second catalyst will be the investigational new drug application with the FDA for the solid tumor trial. Um, <clears throat> and that will be, um, as I say, before the end of the year. And that trial will start in the first half of 2026. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> the solid tumor market itself is estimated to be of approximately $400 billion value per annum worldwide. So commercially speaking, that is a vast market. 
Um, and then the third catalyst, of course, will be the I end our investigational new drug application, which we will um, submit for GTB seventy five fifty, which is for the for autoimmune disease. Um, so we've got three very um, significant ongoing. We'll have three very significant ongoing trials in due course, and hopefully with lots of interesting data coming out of those. So the second question, um, in terms of what's compelling and what's of interest for prospective investors, um, I'll try. I'll try my best to keep this short, but um, you'll forgive me if I don't quite manage it. So what I'll say to you is. Um, we have a rich and deep pipeline. The technology itself is a platform technology, which as Dr. Miller explained earlier, the three part components of the trike, we only need to swap out one component. The other two components stay exactly the same. Those components um, that we swap out are the, are the binders that attach onto the um, tumor cell. So as Dr. Miller explained for solid tumors, the binder will be a B7H3, and then for autoimmune disease, it will be um, CD19, and for um, blood cancer, it's CD33. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first thing. It's platform technology. Um, it's compelling science. It's natural science, and it's humane science. Mm. And the, the final thing I just say to you is, in terms of where the company is currently, we've never been in a better position. Um, in 2021, when we're conducting a phase one clinical trial for blood cancer, and obviously it was a very different market, but at, at its peak, the company's market cap was $550 million. Um, in terms of where we are today and the value proposition that we, we pose, I believe that the company is a very interesting proposition for prospective investors and certainly one that merits um, a deep dive and, and serious consideration for investment purposes. Very well said. You know, the one thing that really touches me is the amount of hope that this gives to countless patients. So thank you, gentlemen, for what you do. Uh, GT Biopharma, Michael Breen, Executive Chairman and CEO, joining us today, along with Dr. Jeffrey Miller, uh, Consulting Senior Medical Director. Thank you both so much for your time. Of course, you can learn more at gtbiopharma.com. And again, they are trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol GTBP. Best of luck to both of you. And thank you again for all you're doing and for joining Stocks to Watch. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.